Hey, do all numbers go to one? I mean, do they? Seriously. All right, we want to show that there's no circuit loops. But that means showing that 3 to the x minus 2 to the x is never divisible by 2 to the k minus 3 to the x for any k and x. Let's take k equals 20, x equals 12. Is 527,345 divisible by 517,135? I don't think so, just by looking at it. How about k equals 32, x equals 20? Is 3,485,000 something divisible by 70 million something? I don't know, maybe? And these are tiny loops we're looking at right now with a couple of dozen up and down moves. Imagine loops with millions of operations. Well, divisibility is a lot easier if we break these numbers down into their prime factors, like this. Now we can cross off the 5 and the 13th, but we can't cross off the 499. I think a 499 is something like a spoiler factor. It keeps this ratio from being an integer and tells us that there's no circuit loop with k equals 32, x equals 20. So we'd like to show for every choice of k and x, there's some spoiler factor down here in the denominator. The trouble is these prime factorizations look pretty random. So let's see if we can find some patterns. Before we look at how 3 to the x minus 2 to the x factorizes, let's look at how plain old x factorizes. Here are the prime factorizations of x. They look pretty random. I mean, 20 is 2 times 2 times 5, 21 is 3 times 7, 22 is 2 times 11. I mean, what the heck? But there's some method to this madness. To get these factorizations, we can start with 2 and write down a 2 next to every even x. Then move to 3 and write down a 3 next to every third x. 4's already got something, so we'll skip it. We put a 5 next to every fifth x, and so on. Every time we hit a prime x, we introduce a new factor into the table, and we write it an infinite number of times. Okay, how about something like 3 to the x? Well, factorizing this is much easier. 3, 3 times 3, 3 times 3 times 3. Same for factorizing 2 to the x. Unfortunately, 3 to the x minus 2 to the x looks pretty random again. But it seems to have a similar pattern to before. Let's write down a 5 next to x, every even x, and then we write a 19 next to every third x. We write a 13 next to every fourth x, a 211 next to every fifth x, a 7 next to every sixth x, and so on. All right, three things to notice. First, every x introduces a new factor here, not just the prime x's, like x equals four introduces 13. Second, sometimes a newly introduced factor is composite, not prime. For example, x equals seven introduces two new factors simultaneously, 29 and 71. Third, and this is kind of weird, when x is prime, its factors are even multiples of x with an extra one added. For example, 29 is 2 times 7 plus 1, and 71 is 10 times 7 plus 1. Not just sure what to make of that last fact, but there are definitely patterns here. All right, so how about the denominator 2 to the k minus 3 to the x? How does it factorize? Well, here we need a two-dimensional table because there's a k and an x. And there's definite patterns here too. Uh, but for now, let's just focus on the first column, where the number of blue down mo moves is just 1. So any number of up moves followed by one down move. Um, that means we can write 2 to the k minus 3 to, uh, 3 to the x in this case as 2 times 2 to the x minus 3 to the x. All right, so let's see. It looks like the 7s are evenly spaced, 6 apart. The 11s are evenly spaced, 10 apart. The 23s are evenly spaced, 11 apart. But a really cool thing is to compare the factors of the um, numerator, 3 to the x minus 2 to the x, with the denominator. And if we do that, you can see every factor in the denominator seems to be a spoiler factor. Like the numerator and the denominator have no factors in common at all. That's what they call co-prime. And we can prove it using uh, greatest common factors. So we're trying to find the greatest common factors between these two things. Um, and we know that we can sum these together. Um, 
and we'll, that leaves 2 to the x times 2 minus 1 and we get this. So we know that this last greatest common factor is just 1 because the second term only has 2's as factors and the first term is odd so it doesn't have any 2's as factors. Um, so they're co-prime and that means that uh, the, these two uh, numerator and denominator are also co-prime. How about the second column? It's kind of similar except we don't have 2 minus 1 here we have 4 minus 1 here um, but again the first term isn't divisible by 2 or 3 and the second term is only divisible by 2 or 3 so also co-prime. Alright so we've ruled out the first two columns that means we can say there's no circuit loops with only one or two down moves. How about the third column? Now we run into trouble because the denominator now has some occasional sevens in common with the numerator so not every factor is a spoiler. But with some work we can take this third column out it's not too hard. And if we can do that with all the columns, then we'd be done. All right, thanks for watching and stay tuned.